Yes, Lord, there is nothing that will separate us from your love, O oh God. This morning we stand in this congregation, dear Father, knowing that you love us so much, O oh God. Sickness will not separate us from you, O oh God. Hunger will not separate us from your love, dear Father. Frustrations of life will not separate us from your love. Storms of life will not separate us from your love, dear Father. And that's why this morning we stand before you just to let you know, Lord, that you will not move away from where you have placed us, O oh Lord. We shall stay there in dear Father, because we know that in your presence there is fullness of joy. We know that by the Holy Spirit you shall lead and guide us in this life. And with, your own, with our own strength, we cannot make it, O oh God. And therefore, this morning, Jehovah, we want to worship you, Lord. We want to honor your name. We want to exalt you, Abba Father, because of all that you've done for us, all that you are doing for us, and all that you are going to do for us in the name of Jesus. And if you believe it, may you shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's start there a little bit. Because I know that this morning the Lord has got something fresh he wants to do to all of us. And without the Holy Spirit, we know that we cannot make it in this life. Without the assistance of the Holy Spirit, we know we cannot be able to overcome. We need the Holy Spirit. Those that are hurting, they need the Holy Spirit to give them peace. Those that need strength in this life, you need the Holy Spirit. We are surrounded by so many storms of this life. At times we turn right and left, back and forth, we do not know what to do. But when we lift up our voices on high, and depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Through the Holy Spirit, he enables us to overcome. And this morning, the Lord reminded me as I was praying for this service yesterday afternoon, that this morning, the Lord gonna set forth his Holy Spirit like a cool breeze to every individual that is gathered in this morning. The Lord going to send the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Lord going to fill those that are not yet filled with the Holy Spirit. And those that have been born again for a long time, the Lord going to refill you. So that you may gain new strength to overcome what lies ahead of you. The journey is not for the weak, but it is for the, for the strong. For the kingdom of God suffereth violence. And only they that are strong shall overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. The disciples, when they were in the upper room in the book of Acts chapter number 2, they were in the upper room and they were waiting on God. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then... There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one set upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. This morning, church, the presence of God is here. He is sending His blessed Holy Spirit. And I can see like tongues on fire on top of the hand of each and every one of us this morning. And I want us to open our mouth and let us speak that language that we do not understand. If you have never spoken in your tongues, the problem lies in your mind. Because you are always mindful what you are saying. Whenever you want to begin to speak something, your mind tells you to shut up. But I want to tell you this morning, open up your mouth and, open, and utter something that you do not understand. It may be one word or two words. Be faithful in those words 
And the Holy Spirit will continue to give you more ones. Come on, church, this morning. May you open your mouth and speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit is here. And the Lord Jesus has already released him in order to give us the number men to conquer this life. Oh, Rabba Kashanara Baya Zono Roboko. Yekesa Karabaya Sini Ribiki Narabaya Zaya. Ribiki Tarabara Boboya Zoto Roboko Yaramaya Zaya. Rabba Kato Roboko Ramakati Ribiki Naramaya Zaya. Lama Kato Roboko Ramakasi Ribiki Rabba Kato Roboko Rabakasi Niriyaramaya Zaya. Rabba Kanto Roboko Rabakasi Tiriyaramaya Zaya. Ribiki Narabaya Zaya. It may be one word or two words, but speak it, speak it, speak it. In the name of Jesus, you are getting refueled this morning. You are getting energized this morning. We wait on you. Holy Ghost fire, we wait on you. 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 Holy Spirit, we wait on you. We wait on you. Fill us of fresh. Fill us of fresh. Fill us of fresh. Fill us of fresh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Holy Spirit. Fill this temple with your presence. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you.
Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. We know that we cannot do without you. We cannot do without you, Holy Spirit, in this life. We wait on you. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We want to thank you so very much for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on us. We know that this morning we have received new strength, O oh Lord, to be able to face the battles ahead of us, dear Father. For we know that in this life there are many storms that meet your people, whether born again or not born again. And we cannot be able to overcome these battles without the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's why, Lord, we thank you this morning for giving us a portion of your new strength that we may be able to walk in victory the rest of this week. We thank you for the infilling. We thank you for refilling. We thank you for refilling. We thank you for infilling. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. And with the joy of the Lord, let's take our seat for a moment. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, praise and worship. Thank you very much. May God bless you. We know that the Lord has got a special thing for us this morning already. We have received the best portion of it. I've been refilled this morning. I feel re-energized. And I know I have new strength to face the battles and the challenges of life that, is, that are ahead of me. I want to thank God because of uh, given this opportunity to start before you. I don't take it for granted. I'm not the best at all. I'm the weakest among you, but the Lord has seen it worth it for me to be able to start before you and to deliver the word of God. I thank God because of our, of our bishop and Pastor Alice and the other pastors and the leadership of this church for giving me this opportunity. I know that God has got a remote word for each and every one of you. And uh, the title of my message this morning is Facing the battles of life, facing the battles of life. And we cannot be able to face the battles of life alone. We cannot be able to overcome the storms of life alone. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need Jesus to be with us in order for us to be able to overcome anything that comes across our lives. I don't know whether you, whether you have ever been in a thunderstorm, whether you've been in a place where there is a big, big thunderstorm. I don't know whether you are fearful when that thunderstorm roared and momentarily maybe even you lost your, your hearing and you never knew what to do next. And maybe it could be even you thought the end of the world is just about to come. If you are human like me, I know you have been through storms of life. I've been a number of storms in my life since I was born and born again. And my wise bishop always tells me that there are, people are in three categories. They are either in the storm or they are entering into the storm or they are coming out of the storm. And I know this morning, I may be speaking to somebody who is right in the middle of a storm. I may be speaking to somebody who is coming out of a storm that had engulfed your life. And I may be speaking to somebody who for sure you are going to enter into a storm, whether you like it or not. 
None of us is immune to the storms of life. They are guaranteed to come and may, you, and, and may even be in one right now. Storms can come in many different pains, in, in many different forms, such as pain, such as suffering, or even loss. Storm, storms can happen at your workplace. Storms can happen in your family. Storms can happen in relationships and even in the ministry. It is possible for any area of life to bring stress, frustrations, emotional chaos at times. And therefore, there is no area of life that you cannot experience a storm. And speaking about a ministry, you may be yearning to serve God. You may be looking forward when you can, be, when you can start now serving God in a dimension that always you've been dreaming about. You may have a vision, but I want to say this, that a vision without a task, it always makes a visionary. You, are always, you always remain a visionary. But a, vi a, a vision accompanied with a task, it will make someone a missionary. You will become a missionary. A vision with a passion makes a, a successful Christian. The Bible says that without a vision, a people perish. But I want to say that without a passion, the church will not be able to grow. Let me repeat that. Without a vision, a people perish. If you do not have a vision in life, you will not succeed in anything. If you don't have a vision in life, you are sure going to perish. And without a passion, the church will not be able to grow. Growth will be experienced in this church when passionate believers will answer the call of God in their lives. When you go in the highways and byways, Ministering the word of God without fearing. Speaking the word of God. And letting people know there is a Christ who is supposed to come back for every one of us. Whether one is a sinner or a righteous person. And for them to yield their lives to Christ. We need to be passionate so that the church can grow. I'm sure you are aware it was spoken in the early days. That people were so much heavenly minded that they became of no other good use. Be because they were so focused in heaven. But things have changed completely nowadays. Believers, Christians, we have become so otherly minded that we, are, we become of very little heavenly use. I don't know what about you this morning. I want to pose a challenge to me this morning. Am I so earthly minded, minding so much about the earthly businesses that I become of very little heavenly use? May the Holy Spirit that we have received this morning put a fire within us so that we may become of, of, of good heavenly use in the mighty name of Jesus. I think we all agree that it is easier to praise God in the good times when everything is going very well in your life. When you have received a salary increment, you go home with a lot of joy, with a big smile in your face. Even the people you meet around, they see somebody walking upright. Something good has happened to you. You can be able to thank God. It becomes spontaneous. Something good has happened to you. It is very easy to give thanks to God when everything else is very good. But what about in the bad times? Are we able to give thanks to God? Are we able to go before the Lord 
and say, Father, I thank you. Through this storm, through this challenge in my life that I'm passing through, I just want to thank you. I want to say it is not easy. It is not easy to thank God when you are facing a storm. One singer sang and said that the God of the mountain, he is still the same God in the valley. And therefore the God of the mountain, when you're experiencing the mountain experiences, when everything else is so good in your life, he is the same God when you are in the lowest of your life, when you are in the deepest valley. I would like to let you know that he remains the same God. There is no God of the valley. There is no God of the mountain. He remains the same. Those people that are experiencing the valley, they, it is the same God who is there with those people that are experiencing the mountain. I would like to encourage all of us to keep trusting God. To keep looking to God. To keep waiting on God. When the storm comes or an expected thing comes and strikes in your life, leaving you in a place of heart, leaving you in a place of desperation, leaving you in a place of frustration, leaving you in a place of vulnerability, you do not know what to do. What do you do? What do you do? We all struggle at times. And I guess all of us have wondered a few things in the middle of a storm, in the middle of the challenges that you are facing, in the middle of a battle. There are many things that comes across your mind. And you may be wondering, what is happening now? What is happening with me? I found myself asking these questions so many times. And I've been wondering, God, make the pain stop. Make the pain stop. And sometimes when you go through a certain situation in life, you will wonder, will this ever end? Will this ever end? Will this frustration ever end? Will this thing that I'm, I'm going through ever end? And you wonder, where is God right now? Where is God right now? And at times you try to analyze what you are going through and you do not understand it at all. And you want to know what is the reason for this. What is the reason for me to go through this thing? When we are in the midst of a struggle, we have a lot of questions. We ask what, the, what is the purpose of what we are going through, what we are going through. We wonder why we need to experience this pain. I don't know whether I'm speaking about myself only. I don't know whether you also ask questions like me. We ask how God can bring good out of this. And if so, when will that actually happen? You are looking forward to when the pain will end. You are looking forward to when the anger will end. You are looking forward to when the storm will be calm. We sometimes struggle to look to God when fear and struggle enter our lives to a high degree. We are unable to look to God because we are wondering, God, why did you allow this thing to happen? In this time of COVID-19, God, why did you allow us to lose so many pastors and bishops, mighty men of God? Why? We struggle to look to God and start wondering, why did I have to lose my friend through COVID? Why? Sometimes we struggle to understand why did I have to lose that job, a well-paying job? Why? I had so many plans. Or even a pay cut. You had a budget the rest of the year. And even in the next two years, you had a plan. 
and you had a plan according to what you are receiving. And you are wondering, God, why did I have to receive this pay cut? What will I do? And those that are in businesses, you try to strike a deal, nothing is forthcoming. Sales are very low. You try to sell this, you try to sell that. Nobody is willing to buy what you are selling. So what do we do when we are in the storm? And how do we learn to trust and have faith in our Father when life is going the exact opposite direction than we would hope? I want us to read from the book of Mark chapter number 4, verse 35 and to 41. The Bible says that Mark 35 Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41, the Bible says, we should follow, verse number 35, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great wind storm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was all already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind. And say to the, to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so, how, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Verse 41. And they feared exceedingly, and said to one another, who can this be that even the weed and the sea obey him? Who can this be that even the weed and the sea obey him? How would you react if you are in the middle of that sea? How would you react when you see the storm? When a serious storm comes up, we are always looking for a safe place. Verse 37, in the classic Amplified Bible, it says, And a furious storm of wind, of hurricane proportions arose, and the waves kept beating into the boat, so that it was already becoming filled. You see, the disciples and Jesus were crossing the Sea of Galilee, and a violent, you know, storm began to rage. The disciples were frightened. They were fearful. And I can also see that they did not have enough faith. And I want us to look at a few things that we need to do when you are facing a storm. Or when you are facing the challenges of life. When trouble is headed your way. Number one, we always ought to do what Jesus did. And what did he do? Verse 38, the Bible says, But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He was in the stern. The stern is the back of the boat. And he was there, actually sleeping and was not just sleeping just you know sleeping mildly the bible says even he had sought for a pillow and even he had put his head on a pillow that means he was very much asleep when storms come in our lives when challenges comes in our lives many a times we spend sleepless nights worrying. We are unable to sleep at all because we wonder 
when will this end? And when is the solution for this problem that I'm facing? We may toss and turn. We worry what is about to happen or what is not to happen. But Jesus was asleep. Very much asleep. And does it mean that Jesus did not know there was storm? He knew there was storm. But the storm did not have an effect on him. Because he knew that the storm will not make them perish. They will not drown. And he was confident. The biggest challenge in our lives is when we look around and we cannot be able to see a solution to our problem. Then we start worrying and we start flexing. We start waxing cold. We start complaining. We start wondering, what shall we do? Jesus was asleep. I don't know why they had carried a pillow. Because usually in a boat, you know, it is for roaring to the other side. And because he was at the back, I can imagine there was no bed there. But maybe there was somewhere he could sit. And he had uh, that pillow on the side. And I can imagine maybe he was sleeping by his side. And he was dead asleep. Nothing that was happening in this world bothered him. Nothing that was happening in the sea bothered him. He was asleep. What I, what I want to encourage us, church, is that we seek to be at peace. Let us seek to be at peace when the storm comes. You see, the disciples had done exactly what Jesus had told them. Jesus is the one who initiated this trip because he told them, let us go to the other side. And he knew for a fact there will be a storm in the Sea of Galilee. But as the disciples were there doing exactly what Jesus had told them to do, then all of a sudden there came a storm. You could be doing the will of God right now in whatever thing that you are doing. Then all of a sudden you start, you know, you start getting a lot of resistance. You start getting a lot of frustrations in life. You start wondering, is really this the will of God for me to go to the other side? You do not know exactly what you, are, what, what you shall do. You are busy here, really doing the divine and perfect will of God. But this is not getting you to become immune to the storms of this life. Challenges of life will come to every one of us. Whether you are right in the middle of the will of God or whether you are running away from the will of God like Jonah, somehow the storm of life will find you. The disciples who are in the middle of the Sea of Galilee doing the perfect will of God and they found themselves in a storm. But we need to face our storm with peace. Do not toss around your bed all the hours of the night wondering what am I, what shall I do? Fight peace in God. Fight peace in Christ. Fight peace in Christ. It's not easy. Release it to him and he shall calm the storm. In the one moment, things were fine with the disciples. In the next moment, they found themselves surrounded by a storm. And many a times we feel overwhelmed by the waves crashing around us. I don't know whether about you, but for me, there are many times I feel surrounded by waves. Sometimes we cannot get even our head above the water because of the water is coming in the boat that we are in in this life. We dip into a place that is not God-focused or even joyful and at peace anymore. And that's why many times 
At times you look at me and you see, hi, Brother James, I think there is something that is happening in your life because my countenance will have changed. And I'm sure all of us, when you, when you face a lot of things in life, a lot of setbacks in life, it can be seen on our face. You cannot hide it. People will be able to see it. How do we handle the storms? How do we handle the challenges, the adversities when it comes upon us suddenly? In the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 34, the Bible says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Let me read it again. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the, when the time comes. Church, I encourage all of us. Let us give our entire attention to what is happening right now. Do not be worried about tomorrow. Do not be worried about what may happen or what may not happen. Because our God will deal with whatever hard things come when that time comes. Bona asifiwe. In the middle of the storms of life, learn to let Jesus your peace factor. Learn to let Jesus your peace factor. And the other thing I would like us to go or to know is that God will never tell you to do anything dangerous without a way of escape. God will not allow you to go or to, to do a certain task without a way of escape. You will not face any, any danger doing the will of God without a way of escape. Mark 4.35, the Bible says, Amplified Bible says, on that same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. On that same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. That means it is Jesus who sent them. And he knew he gonna calm the storm. They were not to drown in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that the Son of God knew what was, going to, what was just about to happen in the Sea of Galilee? Do you believe it? Personally, I know that Jesus knew that there was going to be a hurricane, there was going to be a storm in the sea. But he knew what would happen. If Jesus knew what was going to happen, that means the disciples, the disciples, the, 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 the disciples were to be at peace because Jesus was to come. The storm. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 23, but God knew what would happen and he prearranged plan was, was carried out when Jesus was betrayed with the help of the lawless Gentiles. You nailed him to a cross and killed him, meaning that Jesus knew that he was to be crucified, meaning that Jesus knew that he was to go to the cross. And if Jesus knew that he was to be crucified, he certainly knew about a storm on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus knew the storm was coming. In everything we face in life, no matter how great the temptation seems to be, or the problem may be, God will always provide a way of escape. God will always provide a way of escape. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But with the temptation also make a way of escape that he may be able to bear it. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to thank God because I have a God that will always provide a way of escape. Whatever comes across my way, I know that the trouble that I am in right now 
It will not consume me. I know the things that I'm passing through right now. They will not overwhelm me. God going to provide a way of escape. The storm will not overtake me. I will not be consumed. But the Lord will provide a way of escape. This morning you might have come with a challenge in your life. This morning you might have come being heavy laden. This morning you might have come not knowing what to do in that particular situation. But I want to encourage you, my brother and my sister, that the Lord going to provide a way of escape. The Lord going to give you victory in whatever that you are doing. There is nothing that's going to come across your path that God will not provide a way of escape. Jesus knew that he going to go to the cross, but he allowed himself to go to the cross so that we may have our victory. And the storms of the Sea of Galilee did not deter Jesus from crossing to the other side, from, from making the disciples go into the boat and go to the other side. They went into the boat knowing that there is a storm, but Jesus was sure there is a way of escape. And I want to encourage somebody this morning. There is a way of escape in your problem. There is a way of escape in your situation. There is a way of escape in that calamity. That thing that you are facing in this life. God going to provide a way of escape in the name of Jesus Christ. You do not have to toss around the whole night wondering what to do. You may be hurt, but I want to let you know that God, going to provide a way of escape in the name of Jesus Christ. You might be wondering, what will I do now? There is so much storm that is surrounding me. There is so much, a, a lot of things that are happening in my life. I try this, I try that. Nothing seems to work. You may be wondering, I am now jobless. I've been rather jobless because of covid uh, and now I don't know what to do. The little money that I had, I tried this business. And that business never picked up. I borrowed this money from this person and he is asking for that money. And now I do not know. But I want to let you know that our God knows your very situation. Our God understands you better than even you understand yourself. It could be that even that job, God understood that you do not need it. Because he has a better plan for you. Do not toss around, but fight peace in Christ, and he's going to provide for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. If the disciples, they were in the boat, they did not know what to do. They were so worried, and even water started coming inside the boat, and that boat could have been, could have capsized. They did not know what to do. Maybe they tried to get water out of the, of the boat, but Jesus was there, very calm, asleep, and even his head was on the pillow. And he was at peace with himself because he understood that this storm will not make us perish in this sea, but we're going to make it to the other side. And let me encourage you, church. You may be having a storm in your life, but I encourage you to be at peace. People will look at you and see the hurricane that is surrounding you. They will see the many bad things are surrounding you. They will see the needs that are surrounding you. But fight peace in Christ because he's going to provide for you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Fight peace in the Lord because he's going to provide for you. Fight peace in Christ because he will not leave you. He is not asleep to the extent that he cannot wake up and calm the storm of your life. Bonasifiwe. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I would like, church, to you to feel encouraged to know that our God is able to calm your storm of life. Whatever that you are 
passing through, whatever that is surrounding you, our God will calm it down. There is nothing that is impossible with our God. There is nothing that is impossible with our God. It was impossible for the disciples uh, to calm the storm. It was impossible for the disciples uh, to calm that storm in the Sea of Galilee. But it was possible with Jesus. I came to announce to you this morning, with Jesus it is possible. That situation that you are passing through, with Jesus it is possible. He gonna calm it. I would like us to stand up, even as we declare that it is possible for the storm that I'm facing right now, even to be removed and even to be calmed in the name of Jesus Christ. Church, I want you to raise up your hand and to the Lord who is able to calm the storm of your life, who is able to calm the situation of your life, who is going to provide a way of escape in the things that you are going through. This morning, I want you to lift up your hands and raise up your voices and tell God, yes, I am drowning this morning, but I'm calling upon your name. You may calm the storm that I'm facing this morning. Calm the storm that I'm facing this morning. May you speak peace to the situation that is facing my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, I pray this morning, I speak peace to every circumstance in my life. I speak peace to every situation of my life. I speak peace to everything that is coming across my way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak peace to my family. I speak peace to my workplace. I speak peace to my friends. I speak peace even to the church. I speak peace to the everything that is surrounding me. In the name of Jesus Christ, that situation, church, that is, has been following you up for a long time. May you allow Jesus to speak peace on it this morning. Allow Jesus to calm that storm in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nothing is impossible with Christ. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. What was impossible with the disciples, though they were following Jesus 24-7, yet when the storm came, they were so terrified terrified and afraid. They did not know what to do and they had to await Jesus. This morning, as we are calling upon Jesus, He gonna help you in your very situation. He gonna help you in your very circumstance. Whatever that you are going through, Jesus gonna help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we are faced by so many challenges of this life. We are faced by so many storms in this life. We have so many battles in this life. And at times we do not know what to do. We do not know where to run to. At times we are unable even to pray and to call upon your name. Because we wonder, why did you allow what is happening in my life to go on? But this morning you have reminded us, you are not like us. You can raise up and calm the storm of our lives. And that's why, Father, we pray this morning that you may calm every storm that you are facing in this life. That you may find peace in this life in the name of Jesus. That you may find calmness in this life in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, may you help us. Holy Spirit, may you help us in our lives. Help us in our lives. For without you we cannot do it. Without you, we cannot overcome. Help us. Help us. In Jesus' name.